Morning guys, uh, this is another video relating to crypto, but it's just gonna be quick, short, sweet. Um, first thing I wanna say is the reason I don't really cover this too much on the channel is exactly what uh, somebody commented <laughs> uh, yesterday. Um, crypto is a effing scam. A, why you, you made three or four videos and now you're saying it's a scam, blah, blah, blah because quite simply, he didn't watch the videos because the last video was actually t answering a question relating to somebody calling it a scam, but instead dec decided to swear at me, decided to just be abusive, but at the same time, actually with his comment, it showed me I hadn't even bothered watching it to actually understand what I was talking about. And that's one of the big fundamental issues of trying to do stuff. And I will be honest, in the expat community, a lot of people want to be spoon fed. And I don't mind helping people. I don't mind pe pointing people in the right direction, but I'm not doing your financial advising. Um, that's up to you. That's your own decision making. People that believe in crypto, people that don't. The debate on this, I simply would say, do what you like. Um, there's been several people I've spoken to about crypto. And when I got into it, I said to them, have a look at it. It sort of went 50-50 then, because a lot of people thought, Bitcoin is crypto. Bitcoin is only one of about 1,200 plus at the minute. Um, the point being is, I'm not telling you to invest in anything. I'm not making any money off you. I'm not telling you what to do with your pension fund, your retirement fund, your savings, your earnings or anything else. That is your decision. Um, all I'm saying is it works for me. That's it. You know, you don't have to believe in it. You don't have to get it. You don't have to understand it. Um, but I just want to point out that it's not all a scam. Some of the stuff out there is a scam, and the SEC and others have already told people they will hunt those people down. Um, at the end of the day, things like BitConnect was a scam. It's a Ponzi scheme. And the thing with me is I can openly say that, you know, at the end of the day, I was telling people it looks like a Ponzi scheme to me. Um, but at the same time, you've got projects that are actually legitimate. You've got, um, if you look at VE Chain, VE Chain is looking to combat counterfeiting. Basically, you'll be able to scan a bottle of wine, know which vineyard it's come from, the logistic transportation, all the information relating to that bottle of wine. The same would go for a Prada handbag or a pair of shoes. And there may even be a point where every transaction that's occurred on that would actually happen the same as it would with a vehicle transfer, that the information is recorded on the blockchain. Why would that add value? Well, the, the reality is counterfeiting is a major problem. And a lot of it actually comes from the same factories. That's the joke because they do it. I mean, if you, you, if you guys have been in the Philippines, you'll know the term overruns overruns is the ones that they run extra of at the factories as such they will do it on purpose because they're not supposed to be selling them in the supermarkets and in the gasanos and things like that but they do um and the same as if you go to macau and the big um if you go near the border you'll find some major places to buy pretty much anything the chinese version of everything yeah, they don't like you recording in there um, because it all becomes very transparent on how bad the corruption is. Myself, my first computer was an Apple IIe. And now, bearing in mind, this is going back to the 80s. I had one before most computer uh, companies had a computer. I had it from Hong Kong. The whole computer was counterfeit. The computer monitor was counterfeit. Everything that come with it was a copy. And that was in the 80s. It's only got bigger. <laughs> um, the only thing they wouldn't copy was the printer, but they could copy printers even then because they had the technology. They could put, when your computer boots up, with you know, you've got the nice Windows logo, the Apple logo now, they would actually ask you, what do you want on there? Because they would actually program it into the EPOS. Um, EPROM, sorry, not EPOS. Erasable program or read only memory. Um, the point being is that was going on even back in the 80s. 
the validation of counterfeiting through VU chain is becoming a major thing now and it's one of the investments I'm in. It will get there. That's the thing that companies are already interested in this. BMW is interested in it. Um, the Chinese tobacco industry are in it, not only for the anti-counterfeiting, but the tax avoidance, the illegal smuggling. That's what they are targeting. Now, the thing with that is I could see the Chinese pushing that on alcohol as well. The next biggest market. You've got alcohol, tobacco, showing where it's come from, which ports it's went through, how it got there, who delivered it, has it been tampered with? Now, when people say, well, you know, crypto's a scam, fine, that's your opinion, keep it. Um, but I, I would just say, if you're interested, go through some of the actual projects, because a lot of the projects are actually valid, and there's a lot of junk. Um, yeah, sometimes it's a bit like a needle in a haystack, but at the same time, there's a lot of validity in this because one of the things you will get is the, the utilization of the blockchains to carry out these transaction and checking processes charge a small fee. <clears throat> As such, you have liquidity on the tokens. You have a usage for it because it's what supports the network. And this is where a lot of this actually earns money because they do have a use. And there's other people working on science. You've got the people that are looking at sharing, like Golem, looking hard to share your uh, processing power, Sia coin, looking at sharing hard drive space on your computers. And you start thinking, well, hang on, some of these projects could actually work. And I'll tell you an example of where this sort of technology would work. The SETI project. The SETI project was relating to doing algorithms relating to space and looking for ET. Uh, not ET, but extraterrestrials. Um, the point being is you shared your processing power to do part equations for working out some of these issues. And they use processing power all around the globe to help them with that. That is Golem. But Golem's using this in a much bigger, bigger way and more commercial in the sense you could use it for CGI and other things. Um, the other side of that being is the same technology is used for algorithms and testing for things like cancer. Um, I'm trying to think, it's coming out of, oh, I can't remember the name of the project. There's, a, there's actually a project with one of the universities in the US. They actually have the, they've set it up where you can actually pick what you're testing for, uh, different types of diseases, different cures, etc. cetera. Um, and the whole point is, this is where the crypto space will dominate because it has the power of community. And then you've got the other side of this where you get an advertising rammed down your throat through Google. You've got the privacy issues with Facebook. And uh, I'm surprised they haven't even tapped into Google to find out what they've been doing. But the whole point is you're looking at entities that are part of the globalization and centralization of pretty much everything you've got. Um, crypto space is looking to combat that in different ways whether it's obscuring things so that your privacy is secured, whether it's people having to sell you advertising for viewing it instead of them just randomly sending you stuff that you've already purchased. Because I mean, that's, that's what I'll say with Facebook. I see an Amazon and then buy an Amazon. Then I go to Facebook and the ads are all over telling me that I should buy this. But I just did 10 minutes ago. Complete waste of the advertiser's money complete waste of my time it's just clutter on my screen and it just shows how bad some of these algorithms are um, but at the same time blockchain technology is changing that because at the end of the day somebody selling a sofa for example just needs to know demographically if I'm in their area they need to know what type of sofas I'm interested in or at least get me interested in a sofa um, and maybe the specific age group or whether I want credit or whatever. So a credit rating, maybe, but probably not even the credit rating is important. But the point being is, 
having control of your own data, you can allow people to access specific things. For example, if an app was out there saying, I'm looking for a sofa, this is my area, and then the advertisers can feed that information back. It sounds a bit strange, but that's the sort of stuff advertisers want. They want very targeted stuff. They don't want to go, here's a million euros. Um, hopefully I'll make a profit out of this. No idea where a lot of the advertising has gone. No, no awareness of even the advertising hit people or bots because I think, I think it's around 70% of the advertising gets in front of bots. It's not even in front of people. Um, so even having a smaller, more reliable, robust system would actually work. So there's lots of reasons that looking at crypto, I would say have a look at it beyond what you're told in mass media. Mass media is owned and controlled. If you like Rupert Murdoch, fine, keep on that path. It's, it's he is a, yeah, I'm not getting into Murdoch today. But it, the point being is, it's centralized, it's controlled, and it's like, keep in this, keep doing what you're doing. That's what they want. They want everything revolving around themselves. If they get it wrong, it's okay, they just bill you for it as a taxpayer. Um, but there's a lot of technologies coming out of this, and the one thing they're not gonna have is the control over it. Because unlike a lot of the businesses out there, and I can tell you about a hotel chain in the UK, they also own country clubs. Two brothers built it up from scratch in the 60s. And the one brother eventually died, because the one was, well, they were both professional boxers, but one was a professional boxer, while the other one was more business savvy. Um, the one eventually died, leaving the other one. The other one kept the business going and it grew up from petrol stations, etc., until it became a hotel and a restaurant and country club enterprise. Then one day he walks into the boardroom and he's been pushed out by the banks because the banks promote, we'll give you money, we'll give you money, we'll give you money, we'll give you money for the next investment, investment, investment. So they expand, expand, expand. And then the bank one day goes into the office and goes, you know what, we want rid of him and we will cancel the loans if you don't get rid of him. And we want to put this guy in charge. That's centralized banking for you. Somebody built a business up with their brother from the 60s, from scratch, was ousted by banks that shouldn't even have that control in a business because quite simply, they are not a shareholder. <laughs> They're just lending the business the money, but they did it. Thanks for watching.